all started when the second cousin twice removed came from Boston to visit the Woodlawns and to take charge of the household while father and mother made a short trip to St. Louis. Cousin Lucy was a very old man and lady with strict ideas about raising children. Since she never had any children of her own to test her theories on, the best she could do was to visit her relatives and try her hand at approving their children. <laughs> it seemed in the Woodlawn family that there was always room for improvement. Caddy was too wild and harem scarum. Hattie talked too much. Warren was too noisy and untidy. Clara might have been a great help to her mother. <laughs> Minnie was lazy. And baby Joe was, was spoiled. spoiled. Concerning Cousin Lucy, from the book Magical Gnomes by, by Carol Ryrie Brink. Cousin Lucy never had a thing against Tom. She said that he reminded her of her great uncle Eustace, who had fought in the Revolutionary War and had shaken the hand of General Washington. <laughs> cousin Lucy was among them. The children could not help looking upon Tom with a certain amount of disfavor. Tom, dear, fetch me my workbox, do. If I asked one of the others, it would be sure to be spilled and the color spools mixed. While Tom was gone, Cousin Lucy was likely to air her mind to Mother about the girls. They are altogether too restless, Harriet. And forward. Dear me, their backs might be straighter, too. When I was a girl, I was required to sit for two hours each day, perfectly still, with a board strapped to my back to keep me quite erect. You should require the same thing of your girls, I believe, Harriet. See how straight my back is now? I shall never be one of these leaning and bending old women, mark my words. <laughs> my back is as straight as a railroad. There is not a thread of gray in my hair either. This was quite true. <laughs> the children looked on with a kind of horrified awe. Cousin Lucy's poker straight back, and the untold waves of coal black hair which trained her sallow face. There was something ageless about this strangely black hair, which never varied from day to day. Mother's hair became disarranged, or was dressed in another style. But Cousin Lucy's hair never changed in the slightest degree. It was Tom who first started the room with a Cousin Lucy wore a wig. She had gone on a little walk and had met a garter snake. <laughs> Ew! It's Tom! It's Tom! Oh, Tom! Tom found her standing on top of the stump with a small circle of gliding away. Tom told Caddy later that the strangest thing of all was Cousin Lucy's hair. It was on crooked. <laughs> honest, not a hair was out of place. But the whole lot was turned a little. Sideways. <laughs> if Cousin Lucy wore a wig, did she sleep in it at night? Or take it off? If she took it off, how would she look? I'm not sure to be able to find out. Uh, it'd be better to wait until... Until Father and Mother are safely on their way to St. Louis before attempting it. Mother made all the last arrangements for her unaccustomed absence from the farm. Cousin Lucy would have nothing to do but look after the children. And don't take them too seriously, Cousin Lucy. On the whole, they are very good children, and I'm afraid that you will just worry yourself if you try to keep too high standards of behavior. <laughs> After Mother and Father with Baby Joe had gone away, Cousin Lucy began to insist upon a whole new set of table neighbors. The children were required to sit very still with their hands folded in front of them on the tablecloth until food was placed before them. They were not to speak until spoken to. They must say see you play. Which is some sort of barbarous foreign language. Instead of please and merci. Instead of thank ye. <laughs> please. Instead of play. See you play. <laughs> thank you. Oh, oh. Merci. <laughs> what do I say in that language for you, welcome? How many times have I told you? You are not to speak until spoken to. Ah, uh, 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 the little finger should be raised in the air. Huh? changes in sleeping arrangements. She made a dormitory for the girls so that Clara, Minnie, Caddy, and Hattie should all sleep in the same room with her. This ain't what they keep out of mischief. As to the boys, I shall leave it to you, Steph. 
I mean Tom, to keep his little brother Warren in good order. Of all the girls, only Caddy was pleased about the sleeping arrangements. <laughs> Cousin Lucy, may I sleep in the very next bed to yours? She will play. Too well bred to let her see you now. Mother, Mother I, I don't, don't know, know why you think so well of us. Now, children, Cousin Lucy has been very good to stay here with you. And I'm too sure Papa brief at her departure. When Cousin Lucy departed, she was touched by the red eyes and dinner mm. tears of the six children. There was a strange smell of raw onions about the bed. <laughs> and it almost made Cousin Lucy's eyes water. <laughs> but she forgave them, even the smell of onions, because of their tears of grief. Maybe I sometimes misjudge them. <laughs> <laughs> 